Matthew chapter 11 and verse 6. And blessed is he whosoever shall not be offended in me. So the scripture says, blessed is he, being a man or woman, who is not offended in him. So Christ is, is, the, uh, is the word. So whatever this Bible says, blessed is the man or woman who is not offended in it. All right. <clears throat> Hold on a second. All right, today's topic is titled, Please Leave. That is the name of today's topic. Please Leave. All right, we're going to start off with Matthew chapter 18 and verse 20. Matthew 18 and verse 20. Matthew chapter 18 and verse 20. For where two or three are gathered together in my name, there am I in the midst of them. So the scripture says two or three that are gathered in his name, he's there. So what's key about that? Um, Brother, uh, Brother Samuel, what is, what is key about that verse? Stand up. What's important about that? Read it again, officer. Matthew chapter 18 and verse 20. For where two or three are gathered together in my name, there am I in the midst of them. What's very key about that? His name. He said two or three gathered together in his name. So, gathered. Think about the number, the quantity. How many are two or three? Is that a lot of people? No, sir. No, that's not a lot of people. So it says, where two or three are gathered together in my name, there am I. So he's showing you. It doesn't take a lot of people to get the job done. That's what the scripture is showing you. You take a seat. All right, from there, go to Deuteronomy chapter 32 and start at verse 30. All right, so I, I hope y'all, that's the first scripture, but I hope y'all understand the tone of this lesson and what we're going to go into today. Deuteronomy chapter 32 and verse 30. Deuteronomy chapter 32 and verse 30. How should one chase a thousand and two put ten thousand to flight, except their rock had sold them? And the Lord had shut them up. So it says, one will be able to chase 1,000. This is talking about in war. Alright? And it says, two shall be able to put 10,000 to flight. And then it says, except their rock had sold them. Read verse 31. Verse 31. For their rock is not as our rock. So the other nations, their rock is not as our rock. Read. For their rock is not as our rock. Even our enemies themselves being judges. So once again, it doesn't take a lot of people to get a job done. Now keep, keep in mind it says, for their rock is not our rock. Who knows what that's going into? Brothers, by show of hands. Stand up. Their God. You said their God? <laughs> Who? What, what scripture do you have uh, to prove that? It's okay if you're not sure. Joel 2 27? Joel 2 27? No, that's not it. Anybody else? Alright, let's go to 1 Corinthians chapter 10 and verse 4. Now keep in mind it says their rock. Alright? So this is gonna this is gonna make it plain. Watch this. 1 Corinthians chapter 10 and verse 4. Uh-huh. And did all drink the same spiritual drink? For they drink of that spiritual rock. Of that what? Of that spiritual rock. Read. That bottled them. Uh-huh. And that rock was Christ. And that rock was Christ because our rock is not like their rock. Our rock, our king, his, his government shall never be overthrown. All right? So it's showing you it doesn't matter how many in number we have. As long as we together in unity and are uh, doing this uh, correct in the most high in Christ, will be okay. So it's not about a large quantity of people. Alright? Alright, from there, go to um, Sirach chapter 16 and verse 1. <coughs> Sirach 16 and verse 1. Sirach, Ecclesiasticus, chapter 16 and verse 1. Uh huh. Desire not a multitude of unprofitable children. It says desire not a multitude of unprofitable children. So keep in mind, today's topic is entitled, Please Leave. 
So, Brother Shamil, stand up and tell me what this verse means. Uh, read it again for the opposite. Surah, chapter 16 and verse 1. Desire not a multitude of unprofitable children. Yeah. Neither delight in ungodly sons. What, what is that going into? Oh, um, well, like with your congregation, don't be dealing with people that's not taking it too seriously or not um, in it too. Right, right. It says don't desire a bunch of unprofitable people because you're going to have, think about just carnally children, right? Your actual children. A lot of people want a lot of kids, but the scripture's saying, all right, it says be fruitful and multiply, but you don't want to just have a lot of kids that are wicked, just like you were going into the congregation setting. So the same thing with us. We will experience growth, and we've already done it, but the scripture says we don't want a bunch of uh, lazy people. We don't want a bunch of niggas amongst the congregation that's not going to push this truth further. All right, you're good. But you are correct. Um, read down. <clears throat> Verse 2. Though they multiply, rejoice not in them, uh -huh. except the fear of the Lord be with them. So the scripture says, you only rejoice if these are righteous individuals. All right, don't rejoice just because, say one day, this place is filled up. Don't be happy just because you see a lot of people. That's, that's something we got to um, keep in mind because growth will come. All right? It's just you have to learn these spirits. If the scripture we're going to go into today, it says don't trust every spirit that comes among you. All right? Read on. Verse 3. Trust not in their life. Uh -huh. Neither respect their multitude. For one that is just is better than a thousand. Read that again. For one that is just is best, better than then a thousand. It's like we read, it said, when two or three are gathered in his name, then it says, one shall chase a thousand, two shall put ten thousand to flight. It says, for one that is just, what does it mean to be just, brothers, by a show of hands? Told it. You said, no, no. What you got? Romans 7, 12. Romans 7, 12. Uh, you can use it. Let's go to Ezekiel 17 and 5. <coughs> Ezekiel chapter 18 and verse 5. I'm sorry, 18 and 5, excuse me. But if a man be just and do that which is lawful and right. So it's going into those who are just do which is lawful and right. Alright, so. <coughs> Go back to uh, verse 3. In Sirach chapter 16 and verse 3. Hold on, so before we continue. Who can tell me the scripture says uh, desire not a multitude of unprofitable children? What would make an individual profitable? Stand up, brother. Don't let everybody show me. Uh, not using his works. Huh? Not using his works. Not what? Using his works to profit for the own kingdom. Uh, you're saying what you ain't saying right. What else? He's not, he's not using his talents. No, I'm asking what will make somebody profitable. Oh, by keeping the commandments. Right, and what else? And bearing God. Okay, you get it, but I ain't what I want. What else? What I'm saying. What makes somebody profitable? Uh, making somebody profitable, uh, knowing God, speaking God's word, praying the back to the truth, uh, keeping the commandments. Making sure you're you giving up your brothers and your sisters the truth. Okay. Not, not really bad. okay, okay. For example, for example, when you read in Romans, alright, Romans 16, uh, is it the sister name? Yeah. yeah. Alright, they made mention of the sister. Alright, they made mention of the sister. Why? <coughs> because she was putting in work. Dorcas. Dorcas, that's it. Dorcas, Dorcas. Alright? If you're an individual, if you don't show up, and nobody knows whether you were there or not, you're not profitable. That's what it's going into. Are you doing anything that if you weren't here, is detrimental to the body? So understand, if not, then you fall in that unprofitable range. So right. you gotta be working so that you can be an individual like, hey, such and such ain't here, we gotta plan around that. Uh, this just ain't here, we gotta plan around that. Make sure you put in work so you can become profitable. All right, that's what that's going into. Because we all supposed to keep the commandments, right? Everybody put on fruits, correct? We all supposed to put on fruits. We all supposed to keep the Sabbath day. That don't, that don't, I mean, I guess that makes you profitable, but what else are you doing? That's the minimum. All right? Get it. Matter of fact, since you said that, um, I'm going to run this toilet real quick. Because yep. uh, the officer just said, 
That's what's required. We have to do that. That's our reasonable service. Right, right, right. All right, Romans 12. Romans chapter 12 and verse 1. I beseech you, therefore, brother, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. As an Israelite, that's what every last one of us is supposed to do. Ezekiel, I'm sorry, Ecclesiastes 12 and 13 says that's our whole duty to do that. But while we're here, what did um, what it say, Ezekiel? We're supposed to build ye houses. Right, right. There's a lot of other stuff to do. The kingdom is within us. We need to um, go to these different countries. We need to open up businesses. There's a lot of work to do. All right? Reasonable service, of course. If you're not keeping the commandments, the hell wrong with you. Everybody's supposed to be keeping the commandments. Right. You feel what I'm saying? Second Peter 1 and 10. Let's get that. Because what also is going on with the name of the class is please me. And we just went over glory not and unprofitable children. And we said we got to make ourselves profitable. Meaning you got to find a niche. Whatever it is, if you can draw, you draw it for the body. If you can paint, you paint for the body. If you can cut grass, you cutting grass for the body. If you can fix cars, you fixing cars for the body. If you can sew, you making garments for the body. Whatever it is, make yourself profitable. Meaning you're doing more than what's expected. Why do people get minimum wage? Because you're doing minimal job. All right. Well, why, do, why do people get promotions? Right. Why do people get promotions? Because they do it above and beyond of what's expected. Mm -hmm. All right. I got Second, you. All right. Second Peter chapter one verse ten. Wherefore, the rather, brethren, give diligence to make your calling and election sure. All right, brothers. How can you make your calling and election sure? What are some things we can do to make our calling and election sure? Somebody give me an example. What you got? There you go. There you go. So, just give an example. I know brothers brothers work, they got wives, whatever. If you went out every single day and did a fly mission on your own, are you making your calling and election sure? Where are you going to be at when Christ returns? If you did that every day, where are you going to be at when he returns? What are you going to be doing? You're going to be laboring in the Lord's vineyard. So, is he going to look on that happy or uh, a sad? Happy, right? That's how you make your call and election sure. Whatever it is that you do, do it to the best of your ability. All right, the best of your ability. All right, where you want me to go? Let's go back to uh, Sirach 16 and 3. All right. Sirach, chapter 16 and verse 3. Trust not in their life, neither respect their multitude. For one that is just is better than a thousand. And better it is to die without children than to have them that are ungodly. And to have them that are ungodly. So, when the script, when the, the title says, please leave, it means just that. If, you, if you're not going to be serious about this truth, in all actuality, you're, you're doing no benefit to yourself by being here. You might as well just chill out, watch football. And say, at least, it's, you know, you can relax. You can cook. You can do all that stuff that you want to do because if you're not going to be serious about the most size work, you're doing yourself a disjustice and us. You're wasting our time. All right, read on. Verse 4. For by one that hath understanding shall the city be replenished. It says, for by one that hath understanding shall the city be replenished. Now see that. It only takes one, two, or three. It don't take a lot of people to get the works done. All right, read on. But the kindred of the wicked shall speedily become desolate. Shall what? Shall speedily become desolate. Become desolate. All right, from there, let's go to Acts chapter 2 and verse 38. Acts chapter 2 and verse 38. Then Peter said unto them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ. For the remission of sin, and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Read. For the promise is unto you and to your children, uh -huh. and to all that are afar off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. Read. And with many other words did he testify and exhort, saying, Save yourselves from this untoward generation. Then they that gladly received his word 
were baptized. And the same day, there were added unto them about 3,000 souls. 3,000 souls were added that day because of what? Because of one man. The Most High God used Peter to add those 3,000 souls. Now keep in mind, even in that multitude of 3,000, was everybody profitable? Most likely not. All right, from there, go to uh, Wisdom of Solomon 3 and 11. All right. <clears throat> Wisdom of Solomon 3 and verse 11. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 3 and verse 11. Uh -huh. For whoso despises wisdom and nurture, he is miserable. He is what? He is miserable. So for those who despise wisdom, which is God's laws, and nurture, nurture goes into correction, um, admonishment, um, just being there for one another. It says, for whoso despises wisdom and nurture, he is miserable. So that's the type of brother or sister that's just going to stay in their wicked Negro mindset. Right. Let me, let me go else. Uh, going unto nurture. Alright? Unto nurture. What do all of you brothers have assigned to y'all? Mm -hmm. A counselor, right? A counselor. So, if you despise nurture, what also do you despise? The what? You despise counsel. You despise counsel. So when the individual that's over you, that's set up to help you grow in the truth, and you don't reach out, you don't call, they tell you to do something, you don't do it, you fall in line with this as well. Right. That's part of your nurturing. That's how you get built up. All right? Yeah. Um, let's read on. For whoso despises wisdom and nurture, he is miserable, and their hope is vain. It's vain. Their hope is true. It's for no purpose. You, you, I don't know why a lot of people do that. You're doing it. You're going through the motions. You're here for, I guess, just for show to make it seem like you, you're doing something. But if you're not taking this truth seriously, and I'm not saying you can't repent. I'm not saying that. But this is a, is a wake-up call. This is something where you should evaluate yourself. Yes, I'm saying. <laughs> not, not. Okay, we are. Their labor's unfruitful. Uh -huh. And their work's unprofitable. And their work's what? Unprofitable. Their works are unprofitable. All right? We are. <clears throat> their wives are foolish and their children wicked. Simply because it starts with the man. Let's do with the man for, for an instance. Everything starts with us. All right? So all you're going to do is continue to bring forth unprofitable seed. Right. It starts with you. All right? You ain't taking it serious. Your wife ain't going to take it serious. Your children see your example. So the cycle continues. All right? We're done. Their offspring is cursed. Uh -huh. Wherefore, blessed is the barren that is undefiled. It says, blessed is the barren which is undefiled. Read. Which have not known the sinful bed. Uh -huh. She shall have fruit in the visitation of souls. All right, from there, let's go to um, 2 Ezra chapter 8, verse 41. <coughs> because there's going to be a lot of us that come into the fold, as we see it right here. This congregation started with a few. Now we got... A few more, all right? But with that being said, just keep in mind, there are going to be a lot of souls amongst us that are not here in righteousness. A lot of people are going to sit right next to you. Even people you knew in the world that come and repent, they're going to be right next to you, but they're not sincere. All right, keep that in mind. Let's read, let's read that. Second Ezra, chapter 8 and verse 41. Uh -huh. For as the husbandman sowed much seed uh, upon the ground and planted many trees, Yet the thing that is sown good in his season cometh not up. Uh -huh. Neither doth all that is planted take root. Read. Even so is it of them that are sown in the world. They shall not all be saved. So this is going in the same vein, was it Matthew 13, the wheat and the tares. It's the same thing. A lot of us are going to grow right next to each other. But in the, in the short summary, it says at the end, it says, they shall not all be saved. Although we come into this walk, some of us before, after, at the same time, and we say we believe the same thing, all of us will not be saved when those missiles come because everybody's not doing this sincerely. People are here for their own, for their own, um, uh, what can I look for? Can you give me that Corinthians where um, some, no, not Corinthians, some preach Christ in, um, in Indian strength. Yeah, yeah, that's what I want. That's what I'm trying to say. I can't hear it out. All right, let's read that. Philippians 1 and 15. Philippians chapter 1 and verse 15. Uh huh. Some indeed preach Christ, 
even of envy and strife. Uh -huh. And some also of goodwill. So it says, and some also of goodwill. But they both come in professing to say that they both believe on Christ. Right. You see that? Uh, we are. The one breach Christ of contention. Of contention. That, that soul that's in here that's always trying to uh, start discourse among the body. Instead of bringing each other closer together. Read it. Not sincerely. Uh huh. Supposing to add affliction to my bonds. To add affliction to our bonds. To his bonds. All right, that's what y'all got to understand. So let's read the end part of that in 2nd Ezra again. 2nd Ezra, chapter 8 and verse 41. Uh -huh. For as the husbandman sows but seed upon the ground and planted many trees, and yet the thing that is sown good in his season cometh not up, neither doth all that is planted take root. Even so is it of them that are sown in the world. They shall not all be saved. They shall not all be saved. Let's jump up. Let's start at verse 1. 2nd Ezra chapter 8 and verse 1. 2nd Ezra chapter 8 and verse 1. Uh-huh. And he answered me, saying, The Most High have made this world for many. The Most High God has made this world for many. Read. But the world to come for few. Um, Brother O'Daniel, what is that talking about? Meaning that um, in the in the uh, kingdom, only one third of all people are gonna make it. Right. So it says, but the world to come for few. Jump down to verse three. Verse three. There be many created, but few shall be saved. But few shall be saved because Christ told us that if they hated Him, they gonna hate us as well. All right. So watch this. This is Galatians chapter 2 and verse 4. Galatians chapter 2 and verse 4. Uh-huh. And that because of false brethren. Because of what? And that because of false brethren. Uh-huh. Unawares brought in who came in privily to spy out our liberty, which we have in Christ Jesus. Uh-huh. That they might bring us into bondage. So we're going to have those type of spirits amongst us who are not here for us. They're not here to learn. They're not here in sincerity. They are false brethren and sisters. All right, and that's that's who the class is for. It's for those individuals asking you to kindly just leave because you can't do nothing against these scriptures. You feel what I'm saying? I'm, uh, can Captain Isaac bring it out beautifully? If one of us go down, another man will rise up. All right, we got camps bringing up everywhere. So. You, with that wicked intention, with that type of demeanor, you're not stopping this truth. All right? Read that again, officer. It says, and that because of false brethren unaware, brought in, who came in privately to spy out our liberty, uh -huh. which we have in Christ Jesus, that they might bring us into bondage. All right? <clears throat> From there, go to uh, Sirach 23 and 19. All right? Because at the end of the day, you can fool men all day. But you're not going to fool the Most High. That's what we have to keep in mind. We don't, we're not here to please men. We are here Sabbath in, Sabbath out. We are always here doing the work of the Most High. We're not doing it for show. We're doing this to get the kingdom. All right? That's the only reason why we're here. Read that. Can yes. I, can I, can I go ahead. Real quick. Revelation 3 and 15. All right. Revelation 3 and 15. Because the thing is, you, not only are you not fooling uh, uh, Christ, uh, you're not fooling us either. It's very simple to see who's sincere and truly trying and who's not. Alright? But the reason why we're going over this class, we want we want y'all to be either hot or cold, right? It's either you in or you out. There's no in-between with, with the most high. Yeah. Revelations chapter <coughs> Revelations chapter 3, verse 15. Uh-huh. I know thy works. Now thou art neither cold nor hot. That you are neither cold nor hot. Read. I would doubt were cold or hot. Right. I wish I would just know. So if you if you cold, you can get out. Right. If you hot, you can roll with us. Let's go. Let's push this truth to another level. Read. So then because thou art lukewarm. Because you're in the middle. You don't know what you want to do. Read. Neither cold nor hot. Uh-huh. I will spew thee out of my mouth. You see that? That's how the most high rolls. The most I'm saying, please leave as well. Right. All right. Sirach 23 and 19. Sirach, Ecclesiasticus, in the Apocrypha, chapter 23 and verse 19. 
Such a man only fear the eyes of men. And that's what a lot of brothers and sisters error in. They make a mistake right there. Because they say, well, you know, the officers or the soldiers, man, you feel what I'm saying? They, they see me at the Sabbath. They think that's enough. You feel what I'm saying? But outside, your intentions ain't correct. And, and what you don't understand, the things that you think you hide, you bring that, those, that same garbage into the congregation. But a Negro mindset, you know, a nigga, he, he can't see that. That's the thing about it. Niggas, boy, what Esau did to our people is sickening. You got to understand that. If you're not in here and sincere, just like I just said, brothers and sisters, they can read on that. They may not call you a bluff. Because why? We hope that everybody can come into repentance. We're not here to tear each other apart. All right? We're here to build each other up. But at the same time, you, if a man is spiritual, he judges all things, like the scriptures say. Yes, sir. Yep. yep. And the main place we can tell it is in your speech. Right, right. It's in your speech. Matthew 12 and 34. Mm -hmm. Matthew 12 and 34. It's in your speech. It's in your actions. So Rock, uh 19 and 29 says, uh, uh, Man, they yeah, know about his looks. A man, they be known by his look. Mm -hmm. you, if you got a, a messed up face, all right, and then when you open your mouth and go with it, that's what y'all don't understand. You're showing yourself. All right, read that. This is Matthew chapter 12 and verse 34. Uh -huh. O generation of vipers, how can ye, being evil, speak good things? Right. When you ain't in the spirit, you can't do it. Right. You can try to fake it. It don't work. How can you, being evil, speak good things? Read. For out of the abundance of the heart, uh -huh. the mouth speaketh. Brothers, what is the heart according to the Bible? What scripture? Stand up, brothers. Be, be, be loud. Be loud. We got to train y'all up to be lions. We ain't we raising up mouth. Stand up, brother. Oh. Mark 7 21. Good. Mark 7 21. So out of the abundance of your mind, the heart speaketh. The heart speaketh. And the most high is short. Alright? So when you carry yourself and what you say, it will show what you're about. That's why Sirach 23 and 19, when it says you only fear man, it's still gonna be revealed. One way or the other. Alright? So let's uh let's go to numbers. Let's go to numbers uh 32. We're just going to jump to the point, 32 and uh, 20. This is when uh, Gad and Reuben was being rebellious. They didn't want to go fight, all right, for the land like the Most High commanded. They'd rather their brothers go and fight, but they stayed back. All right, uh, we're going to jump up to verse 20, Numbers 32 and 20. <coughs> Numbers chapter 32 and verse 20. Uh -huh. And Moses said unto them, if ye will do this thing, if ye will go on before the Lord to war, and will go all of you armed over Jordan before the Lord, until he have driven out his enemies from before him, Read. and the land be subdued before the Lord, then afterward ye shall return and be guiltless before the Lord, before Israel. And this land shall be your possession before the Lord. Read. But if you will not do so, behold, you have sinned against the Lord. And be sure your sin will find you out. Your sin will do what? Your sin will find you out. Keep in mind, brothers and sisters, if you're living in sin, it's going to come to light. That's the thing about it. Being disobedient to the Most High, if you, if you don't have remorse and if you're not trying to overcome that, keep playing with it. Keep playing with it, and that's going to be your ruin. It's going to happen. It's going to come to light if you're not sincerely trying to overcome. All right? Uh, from there, let's go to Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 3 and verse 19. Wisdom of Solomon 3 and 19. We went over this in camp today. All right, watch this. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 3 and verse 19. Uh-huh. For horrible. For what? For horrible. Read. Is the end of the unrighteous. Generation. It says, for horrible is the end of the unrighteous generation. you got to understand, in verse 11, it said unprofitable. Same thing for the unprofitable generation. Those who just want to come here and sit. Because it's, 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 it's very, it's a true statement. If you just come in here to sit and not do anything, you ain't going to be here for too long. 
You know what I'm saying? You're not, you're not engaged with the body. You don't speak to anybody. You, uh, you separate yourself, not doing anything. You're just going to dwindle away. It's true. Because you don't care. Because your reasonable service is going to start slipping. Because if you can't do the reasonable service and some, you know what I'm saying? What? You are unprofitable, just like the scriptures say. Keep that in mind. All right, let's go to um, Acts chapter 1 and 16. He <clears throat> made the statement earlier about Judas. All right, because it said, for horrible is the end of the unrighteous generation. Let's see what Judas' end was. Acts chapter 1 and verse 16. Acts chapter 1 and verse 16. Uh -huh. Now, just for those who are brand new and don't know what Judas did, but who, uh, Brother Mordecai, what did Judas do? He betrayed Jesus Christ, right? So he was one of those false brethren, all right? Read this, and this was his end. This is what happened to him. Acts chapter 1 and verse 16. Men and brethren, this scripture must needs be fulfilled, which the Holy Ghost by the mouth of David spake before concerning Judah, uh -huh. which was guide to them that took Jesus. Read. Verse 17. But he was numbered with us. So he was amongst us. All right? That wicked soul, he was amongst us. Read. And had obtained part of this ministry. And he was a part. He was acting like he was a part of this walk. Read. Now this man purchased a field with the reward of iniquity. Uh-huh. And falling headlong, he burst asunder in the midst. Read. And all his bowels gushed out. And all his what? And all his bowels gushed out. So that was his end. Judas suffered a horrible death. That's what y'all got to understand because he was one of those false brethren. But a lot of people think that um, you won't be caught, right? Just like the scripture said, it's not about what we see, it's about what the Most High sees. He said, horrible is the end of the unrighteous generation. All right, read on. Verse 19. And it was known unto all the dwellers at Jerusalem, in so much as that field is called in their proper tongue, acclamation. That is to say, the field of blood. The field of blood. He had a gruesome death. All right, from there, let's go to um, 1 John chapter 4, verse 1. 1 John 4, and 1, because back in Sirach uh, 16, it said we have to watch, we have to watch these type of um. Uh, spirits and we can't believe we can't trust in these spirits read that first john chapter 4 and verse 1 uh-huh believe beloved believe not every spirit it says believe not every spirit because we're going to come across a lot of brothers and sisters if you stay in the faith you're going to meet a lot of people all right it says believe not every spirit read <laughs> but try the spirit try the spirit how do you try a spirit easy keep these commandments Call it bluff. When correction needs to be brought out, bring it out. Go to the scriptures. That's how you try the spirit. If, if any of us have a problem with the scriptures, be wicked as hell. And that goes for me or anybody in there. So if scriptures come out and you got a problem with it, you're wicked as hell. And please leave. Just like the, like the slip is title, please leave. Because we don't need you. The most I definitely don't need any one of us. And you're wasting time. So please leave. Read on. Beloved. Believe not every spirit, uh -huh. but try the spirit, whether they are of God. Because if we are of God, we will not be offended in his word. That's what the scriptures say. It says, blessed is the man who is not offended in me. Read. Because many put into the world, uh -huh. hereby know ye the spirit of God. Read. Every spirit that confesseth that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is of God. Read. And every spirit that confesseth not that Jesus Christ is come in, is come in the flesh is not of God. And that is that the spirit, and that is that spirit of Antichrist. Brother uh, Sh Shalom, explain that. Because a lot of people may say, well, that ain't talking about me. I'm not going around and saying that Christ didn't come in the flesh. I'm not saying that. What is that going into? Uh, read, read verse 2 and read for the brother. Verse 2. Hereby know ye the Spirit of God. Every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is of God. And every spirit that confesses not that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is not of God. And that is that spirit of Antichrist. Whereof have you heard that it should come and even now it is already in the world. Explain that. 
Well, can I use um, Pharisees as a simple? Because they preach um, commandments, but they're not keeping them. So they're like hypocrites. Hypocrites. Right, 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 exactly, exactly, because they said in their mouth, well, not at that time, they didn't, they didn't, they didn't uh, believe on Christ. They said in their mouth they was about God's business, they were about keeping the commandments, but just like you said, they were hypocrites, right? So they would put on the front as if they were a part of the circumcision, right? But yeah, you know, by blood they were, but their actions showed otherwise. So that in all actuality, just like uh, it says in Matthew 7 and 21, it says, though all those that say, Lord, Lord, I prophesied in thy name. Same thing. Read that matter of fact, let's get that real quick. You sit down, brother. But let's just go into your actions. Your actions. Matthew chapter 7 and verse 21. Uh-huh. Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. Because think about it. We have a wicked soul amongst us. They're not going to say, hey, I don't believe in Christ. They're not going to say that amongst us. You feel what I'm saying? Now don't get it twisted. Our people wake as hell. Alright, from there, let's go to um, Luke chapter 8 and verse 17. Luke chapter 8 and verse 17. Uh -huh. For nothing is secret that shall not be made manifest. The scripture says, no, Christ says that nothing is secret and that shall not be made manifest. Read on. That shall not be made manifest. Uh -huh. Neither anything hid. Neither anything what? Neither anything hid. Nothing will be hid. Not just because men don't see it, that doesn't mean the most high, most high doesn't see it. Read. That shall not be known and come abroad. Read it all the way through. For nothing is secret that shall not be made manifest. Uh -huh. Neither anything hid that shall not be known and come abroad. So it's showing you, whatever you're in the midst of, it'll be in your best interest if you are here in sincerity. To overcome that, um, seek counsel. To make sure you study, reach out to your counselor. All right, because if you're in the midst of that and you and you don't care, all right, mostly he's telling you right here, you will be exposed. It's going to come to light. All right, so we're trying to bring this out so you can make just like Doctor said, make sure you cold or hot. So make it real easy. If you're not if you're not about this truth, just leave. It makes it very simple. Um, I got another one. Yes, yes, uh, James 5 and 16, would you go better? No. All right, James 5 and 16. Because he said that nothing is uh, that would not be known. Not saying if you're dealing with something, the most high going to put you on front street in right. front of everybody. Right. That's not what the scripture say. But the scripture say have one counselor among a thousand. Mm -hmm. So that's telling you, you got an issue, make sure you seek out somebody to help you get over it. Right. But if you try to hold it in and keep it to yourself, try to make yourself uh, front, like you something that you're not, that's when that those measures will be uh, brought forth. James 5 and 16. James chapter 5 and 16. Uh -huh. Confess your faults one to another. Uh, Brother Sammy, what that mean? So if you're dealing with a problem, confess it to your brother uh, or sister in the congregation that your faults be known. Right. Your problem be known. Right. Now why would you do that? Why would you confess your faults one to another? Deal with it by yourself. There you go. There you go. And what's going to happen if you try to deal with it by yourself? What's going to happen? You end up falling out. Right. And, and the scripture that we just read, the most I going to make it known before everybody. Right. Say you deal with lust. All right. You don't tell nobody you deal with lust. You try to handle it on your own. Before long, that's what's going to happen. You're going to be the brother put out for fornication. Right. If you would have let somebody know, we could have helped you. You could have got the proper counsel, and you would have never been in that situation. You see that? Ah, right, let's go back to James 5 and 16. Read that. James chapter 5 verse 16. Confess your faults one to another. Uh-huh. And pray one for another. It says, and pray one for another. I can't pray for you if I don't know you're dealing with something. All right? I want to be specific. Because the scripture says, make your petitions known to God. I can't pray for you if I don't know what I'm praying for you. This ain't the Christian church. I just ain't going to, Lord, send up prayers for this brother. And the most I like What's wrong with this brother? You better let me know. All right, read. That ye may be healed. That ye may be healed. That's what we all want. If you never make you sick, you can never get the problem. You can never get the problem fixed. All right, read. The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. Right, but you'll never get those prayers if you never open your mouth. All right, understand that. And just to follow with the uh, officer brought out, let's go to 1 Corinthians 5 and 11. Because, just like he brought out, if that is not fixed, you will be put out. All right? 
So this is for all of our betterment. This, we need to hear scriptures like this because this lets us know whether we end the faith or not. Just like it says in uh, 2 Corinthians 13 and 5, you know your own self. You know if you're in this faith. You know when we, you leave here what you're really about. You know how what uh, feelings you have towards your brothers and sisters in the congregation. You know that. All right? But if you don't get it fixed, this is what will happen. Let's read that. And if you got to say you're in the truth every two minutes, you're not in the truth. I'm in the truth. You're not. I'm in the truth, brother. I'm in the truth. I'm doing this. You ain't in the truth. Because your actions will show you in the truth, brother. First Corinthians 5 and 11. But now I have written unto you not to keep company. If any man that is called a brother be a fornicator or a covetous or covetous or an idolater or a railer. A railer. Hold up. Before you, who knows what a railer is? What does that stand up? A person that talks a lot. Like he just like talks way too much. That's going into things that are not um, what he's supposed to be. Yeah, uh, filthy, filthy language, a complainer, someone who whose conversation is not is not a righteous conversation. All right, we on. Uh, a railer, or a drunkard, or an extortioner, which such and one know not to eat. Uh huh. For what have I do to judge them also that are without? Do not ye judge them that are within, uh -huh. but them that are without, God judges. Therefore, put away from among yourselves that wicked person. So if you don't take heed to the scriptures, that will go into effect. And y'all have seen that time and time again. These scriptures are for our learning and for our betterment. But Israel is hard-headed. Israel is very, very hard-headed. And we don't want to argue to the scriptures. But... If you're rolling in that spirit, please leave. Because this is not the congregation for you. Alright? If you don't, if you don't fear God in sincerity, this you, we don't want you around. That's that's what we're trying to get through your head. We want the true worshipers. That's gonna re worship the most high in spirit and in truth. And we gotta go through trials together. That's what y'all gotta understand. But false brethren, no, nah, we don't want y'all. Those who's are gonna be backbiters, no, nah, we don't want you either. Alright, but if you struggle with that, let it be known. So we can so we can get, go to the scriptures. We can pray for each other and we can get through it. Alright, let's go to um, Proverbs 15 and 3. Proverbs 15 and 3. <clears throat> Proverbs chapter 15 and verse 3. Uh-huh. The eyes of the Lord are in every place. Is where? Are in every place. The most high is able to see everything. Read. Beholding the evil and the good. Beholding the evil and the good. So, uh, what's the Psalm 19 and 1? I want y'all to understand something. Every last one of us, we have a clock. We don't know when our day is going to come. That's the thing about it. So, why waste time? You feel what I'm saying? We woke up know who we are now. Now, why are we going to come in here and be stagnant? Why are we going to be complacent? This is the best news we ever had in our whole life. So that tells me a lot. That shows me a lot, right? This is the best thing on the face of the earth. And then you play with it? That's unprofitable as hell, man. You got to think about that. This is the best news you ever got. You actually have a chance at the kingdom. Now the kingdom is not for our enemies. It's for us. And then you come and sit and be complacent and don't do nothing. You feel what I'm saying? And stay to yourself. And don't be, right, and don't be happy to see your brother and sister. What the hell is that? You feel what I'm saying? Always harping stuff. Not, not going to your brother and say, hey, you know, I'm sorry, hey, I'm sorry about that. Let's get through this. Or your sister, let's get through this. You feel what I'm saying? Let's, let's read that. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 19 and verse 1. Uh -huh. As for the ungodly, wrath came upon them without mercy. Without mercy? Unto the end. Read it. For he knew before what they would do. Because the most high God, he knows the wicked spirits. He knows what you got to do already. So sometimes he may just take you out. He may not allow you to continue to disturb what he's put in place. That's what y'all got to understand. We all got a clock. Who, but who knows when our time is up? All right, from there, let's go to um, 2 Corinthians 13 and 8. I said it before, but we're going to read the scripture. The reason why I titled this class, Please Leave, is because no matter what you do, uh, whether it be calling weapons, whether it be deceit, whatever, 
whatever it may be, you cannot stop this. Because some people are going to deliver us up to the councils when that day comes. They could be sitting right next to us. Is that going to stop it? No. You feel what I'm saying? Yeah, we can get beheaded. We can get gunned down. We, is that going to stop Christ coming back to get his people? Without all the garbage. You might as well leave now. Read that. 2 Corinthians chapter 13 and verse 8. Uh-huh. For we can do nothing against the truth. Against this truth, read. But for the truth. But for the truth. Because Christ told us that we would have false brethren around us. He told us that we'd be hated by all nations for his name's sake. So if you are that brother, you're still supporting the truth because you're helping the prophecies come to pass. Alright? Let's go to uh, Hebrews chapter 11 and verse 24. Now, like I said to the sister earlier, this she may be like, wow, this is kind of mean. You feel what I'm saying? But no, we're keeping it, we're gonna keep it real. Because y'all gotta understand something. You're here, you should be here to change your life, to um to better your situation, to grow in the spirit, because you want to get the kingdom of God, the kingdom of heaven. Alright? But if you're not, I want to listen to these scriptures real quick. Give me uh, Hebrews 11 and 24. Hebrews. Chapter 11 and verse 24. Mm -hmm. By faith, Moses, when he was come to years, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter. Read. Choosing rather to suffer affliction with the people of God than to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season. Because I'm fully persuaded that I know we got to go through a lot of trials and tribulations. Just like Acts 14 and 22 says. We ain't going to get this kingdom unless we go through tribulation. But... For those who are not ready to go through that tribulation, go enjoy the pleasures of sin. You might as well, because with your first trial, you fall out, you're going to do it anyway. You feel what I'm saying? But only time will tell. I can't judge that before the time. The Lord's word these scriptures will do something to you. Let's go to 2 Thessalonians 2. To show you that, yes, yeah, sin, sin is very pleasurable. But this walk, uh-uh. We will have good times together, but that's not what it's about. I have, a, I have a scripture for what you were just doing in 2 Corinthians 13 and 8. All right. Go to uh, Matthew 16 and 18. All right. Matthew 16 and 18. Because anybody, if you know in your spirit, you dealing with certain stuff, and you, you're trying to, you're not here in, 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 in righteousness, want to do what's correct, this, I'm just going to read the scripture. Because whatever you're trying to do, if you're trying to sow this course, if you're trying to be evil, Trying to see what you can get away with. Can I do this? Can I do that? Let's see what God says. 16 and 18. Matthew chapter 16 verse 18. Uh -huh. And I say unto thee, that thou art Peter, uh -huh. and upon this rock I will build my church. Mm -hmm. And the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. So this truth, the Bible says that the gates of hell would not prevail against what the Most High is setting up. Right. So whatever spirit you roll in, understand it's going to get crushed by the spirit of God. Right. All right. I just want you to understand that. All right. You know what? Let's start 2 Thessalonians. Uh, let's just go to, um, I'm going to wrap it up. Right. <coughs> let's go to 2 Peter chapter 2 and verse 20. 2 and 20? Uh, yep. 2 Peter chapter 2 and verse 20. Uh-huh. But if after they have escaped the pollution of the world, through the knowledge of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Stop. Read that again, and I want Brother um, Brother Daniel to break this down. Read that. For if after they have escaped the pollutions of the world, through the knowledge of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Break that down for me, baby. The pollutions will be um, saying that the knowledge of would be the, um, the word, keep on God's commandment. All right, you just you touched parts of the scripture. Explain it fully. What does that read again for me? Second Peter chapter two and verse twenty. For if after they have escaped the pollution of the world through the knowledge of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, they are again entangled therein and overcome. The latter end is worse with them than the beginning. I really, I still want you to break down the top part. But now since you you heard the second part of the scripture, tie that in. I want you to break in the top, break down the top part first, though. You said it. You, you escape the world of sin, right? right? If you escape something, that means you had to find safety somewhere, right? right. So break that down. Safety is um, 
in the word, like keep on um, God laws and commandments. Right, I'll pray. So it says, for if, for after they have escaped the pollutions of the world through the knowledge of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, now they know who you are. Now they congregate. Now they're, they're um, amongst their brethren. Now they're in a, in a building. No, no, I'm not done with you yet. I want you to break down the second part. It says, and overcome the latter end. I'm sorry. And overcome. So now they overcome the world. They came out of the world just like all of us did, right? Now the second part, listen to it. It says, the latter end is worse with them than the beginning. What is that talking about? Let's read it all the way through again. You can smell it. For if after they have escaped the pollutions of the world through the knowledge of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, they are again entangled therein. Stop. So then it says they are again entangled therein. So after you come out of the world, now you congregate. And then you get entangled with the world again. Right? You forsake God's commandments and come. Now you're tripping. You still may be sitting amongst us, but now you don't cause yourself to get entangled with the world again. Read and overcome. The latter end is worse with them than the beginning. So now you're going to be worse off than that, that Negro that was in the world before. Because now you know what it takes to get the kingdom. Now you know what real righteousness is. And you know that, but you're still that wicked to forsake God's commandments and go back into the world. That's showing who you really are. Read, uh, read on. Verse 21. For it had been better for them not to have known the way of righteousness. Read that again. For it had been better for them not to have known the way of righteousness. That's why the, the title is Please Leave. Because you're making it worse for yourself. If you do not want to change, if you do not want to forsake what you think is right, it's going to be worse off for you. You're wasting your time right now, and then you'll get punishment. That's a waste of time. Read on. For it had been better for them not to have known the way of righteousness. Then, after they have known it, to turn from the holy commandment delivered unto them. From there, let's go to Sirach 26 and 28. But you, you understand that, brother, right? Go. All right. Sirach, chapter 26 and verse 28. Mm -hmm. There be two things that grieve my heart, and the third maketh me angry. A man of war that suffered poverty, and men of understanding that are not set by, and one that returneth from righteousness to sin. Read that part again. And one that returneth from righteousness to sin. Those are one of the things that grieves the Most High's heart. That grieves the heart of the Most High. If you come into this truth, into repentance, and you go right back into the world, now you are a worse monster than what you were before. So when you're in these doors, and when you're on online class, and when, you, when you're by yourself, you, you need to be a different person. Stop not um, correcting that little demon. If you know, oh, I shouldn't have said that, you need to rebuke yourself. You need to go to that brother and sister and apologize and quit making excuses. Think about something wrong with no. It's what something's wrong with you. It's not everybody else. That's the thing about it. Quit thinking everybody else is pointing at you and look at your own self. Alright? You got something? Oh yeah, I got a plan. There you go. Uh Sirach 37 and 14. Sirach 37 and verse 14. Because in the world, in the world, what we see a lot of, y'all know I teach. So Children, they never going to say it's their fault. They never going to say it's fault. Everybody's quiet. One individual's making noise. And when you call them, they look around like, what's going on? What's the problem? Cut. Like, you need to be quiet. Instead of examining themselves, we got to grow up and be men and be women. Look at yourself first, figure out what the issue is, and get it fixed. Let's read that. Sirach, chapter 37, verse 14. Uh-huh. For a man's mind is sometimes... I'm sorry. For a man's mind is sometimes wont to tell him more than seven watchmen that sit above in a high tower. Right. So those seven watchmen, for an example, that's your counselor. You trying to figure out, do, am I doing wrong? Uh, every time you call, the brother's telling you, hey, where you been at? Why you in contact? Why you ain't did this? Why you ain't did that? But yet, you still think you're right. You still can't accept that what you're going through is wrong or what you did was wrong. 
And in the vision, we tell, we tell us, us just a brother, hey, you wrong according to this scripture, that scripture, that scripture. You love it, you're like, all right. But this happened and that happened. It's like, bro, we just told you and showed you the scripture. And you still got something to read it again. Read it again. For a man's mind. For a man's mind, meaning your opinion, your thoughts, how you feel, read. And sometimes want to tell him more than seven watchmen uh -huh. that sit above in a high tower. Right. So if everybody's saying you in the wrong, guess what? 99% of the time, you in the wrong. And it's that simple. All right? Let's go to Sharon 24, since you brought that up. Just like the officer just said, it's, it's your mind. Mark 7, 21, tell you what your mind is capable of. But you know what that shows? The key thing you said, the example you gave, you said a child. Yep. You know, a child, yeah. That's what children do. You feel what I'm saying? A lot of people come out of the world and have status. They think they're somebody when they come through these doors. You got to understand, you one day old. You one week old. You a year old. So that's what you got to understand. You got to learn how to grow up in the world, not manly. Uh, in, in the world, if you fight a lot, you, you're a man. You're a man. You know what I'm saying? If you just go crazy, start cussing people, oh, man, he hard. Man, that's a man right there. No, that's a child. Because he cannot control his own tongue. That's a child. A man in these scriptures is a spiritual man that can go to the scriptures and resolve every problem that he's faced. And not just go stupid with his lips. Yep. All right, watch this. Sirach 3 and 24. Sirach chapter 3 and verse 24. For many are deceived by their own vain opinion. Say that again. For many are deceived by his own vain opinion. Many are deceived by their own vain opinion. Many. And an evil suspicion have overthrown their judgment. Nah, it's not me, it's everybody else. And an evil suspicion have overthrown the judge. And that's what it is. That's that evil suspicion. You cannot point the blame at yourself. It's always somebody else. I can't be wrong, so it has to be you. All right? From there, let's go to um, Ezekiel 20, we got verse 34. Ezekiel chapter 20 and verse 34. Uh -huh. And I will bring you out from the people. And will gather you out of the countries wherein ye are scattered. Please. With a mighty hand and with a stretched out arm. Mm -hmm. And with fury poured out. And will bring you into the wilderness of the people. Stop. So when we are delivered from the um, from the missiles, the wilderness will come again. We'll have to do the exact thing, Lord's will, if we make it, that our forefathers went through. So read that again, officer, verse uh, 35. Verse 35. And I will bring you into the wilderness of the people. Uh -huh. And there will I plead with you face to face. Read. Like as I pleaded with your fathers in the wilderness of the land of Egypt. Read. So will I plead with you, saith the Lord God. Uh -huh. And I will cause you to pass under the rod. And I will bring you into the bond of the covenant. So we will learn how to keep God's commandments the correct way. Right? Read on. And I will purge out from among you the rebels. He will do what? And I will purge out from among you the rebels. So the rebels are those who are rebellious to God's laws. Read. And them that transgress against me. Read. I will bring them forth out of the country where they sojourn. And they shall not enter into the land of Israel. Read. And ye shall know that I am the Lord. So if you don't want to leave now, you'll leave later. That's how it'll go. If you, if you don't want to separate yourself now from being wicked, you'll be separated when Christ comes back. Amos 99. So that's showing y'all. So guess what? Everybody that gets delivered out of Babylon or America is not going to get into the kingdom of heaven. Right. The same way it was in Egypt. Everybody that got delivered, who went into the promised land? Let's see who's been reading. Brothers, who all went to the promised land? Well, let me ask you, who didn't go into the promised land? Y'all better do what's this? What are you doing, my robots? Time out, man. Children, put your hands down. Brothers, where y'all at, man? Oh, man. What is this? Where the brothers at? Nobody know who, made it to, who didn't make it to the promised land? Moses. You gonna stand up? What is this? What is this? Moses didn't make it to the promised land. Why didn't he make it? You know? Yes, sir. Why? It was in the desert of sin, and uh, he didn't speak before the God's word. Good. I'll pray. I'll pray. I want to see who read. 
So, even Moses, was Moses delivered out of Egypt? Was Moses a great man? Yep. Did he get to the, the, to, to the promised land? No. no. So understand, when we leave here, guess what? Some of us going to be, hey, we're going to be feeling good, get out from the chariot, oh, fly through the sky, get dropped off in the wilderness, and that you might be the first person Christ called up to be an example. That's why I said make your calling and election sure. What type of example is he talking about? Look at this simple brother right here. Is he talking about that? We just laugh at him. What type of example is, is the scriptures talking about? Brother Noah. Yeah. Stand up. Yeah. Yeah, death. Christ is going to put you to death in front of all Israel. Alright, let's go to Amos 9 and 9. Amos chapter 9 and verse 9. For lo, I will command. And I will sift the house of Israel. And he will sift the house of Israel among all nations. Read. Really. Among all nations. Like as corn is sifted in a seed. Uh -huh. Yet shall not the least grain fall upon the earth. Read. Really. All the sinners of my people. All the what? All the sinners of my people. Read. Really. Shall die by the sword. Uh -huh. Which say, the evil shall not overtake nor prevent. Alright, last scripture. Second Peter chapter 3 and verse 9. That scripture. All right, with these scriptures that came out today, uh, what we're going to read is in our best interest to take heed. All right, read that. Second Peter chapter three and verse nine. Uh -huh. The Lord is not slack concerning His promise, mm -hmm. as some men count slackness, but is long suffering to usward, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Read. But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night, in which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. Mm -hmm. The earth also, and the works that are therein, shall be burned up. This is the point, read. Really. Seeing then that all these things shall be dissolved, what manner of person are ye be in all holy conversation and godliness? What manner of persons should we be? Knowing the destruction to come. Knowing that even if we are saved, we still have to go before Christ and keep the commandments after we leave here. So, it would be in our best interest to get these commandments down packed and go to work. And put forth works. And stop being unprofitable. Stop being lazy. Stop sitting on your behind. Stop being so well rested every darn day. <laughs> lazy. I got a scripture for that. I got it good. I got it good. Let's, let's, let's go to Isaiah 60. Uh, Isaiah 62. Yeah, Isaiah 62 in verse, uh, in verse 1. Isaiah 62 in verse If you got tired in the truth, set it wrong. Set it wrong. So Isaiah 62 in 1. Isaiah chapter 62 verse 1. Uh -huh. For Zion's sake will I not hold my peace. Uh -huh. And for Jerusalem's sake I will not rest. You see that? For Jerusalem's sake, I will not rest. Brothers and sisters that get up at 5.30 in the morning, why are they getting up? They want to learn so they can grow, so they can teach their people. The brothers that get up to teach, the brothers that go out to the streets, the bishops that's traveling all over the world, that, that, that sacrifice being in his own school, his own house, his own life, his own funds, all that stuff for Jerusalem's sake. Meanwhile, we got brothers that don't have no responsibilities, no jobs, no there's nothing, and you can't help out for the truth. Please be offended too. You Whoever that sits on, please be offended. You can't, you can't pick up chairs? You serious? Read that again. Verse 1. For Zion's sake will I not hold my peace. That's talking about us going out to the streets, trying to wake our people up, sending prayers unto the Most High. Read. And for Jerusalem's sake, I will not rest. For Jerusalem's sake, we cannot rest. There's nothing to be resting about, brothers or sisters. Read. Until the righteousness thereof go forth as brightness. Right. Until this righteousness, until we push this truth to the four corners of the earth, we should not be able to rest. Read. And the salvation thereof as a lamp that burneth. Y'all see that? That's what the goal is. That's what the mentality is. We're going to push this truth and we're not going to rest until it comes. Not telling you don't sleep, not saying that. Right. But that's the mindset you should have. That this is, is very, very dire. For example, you know you got paper due the next day, right? 
You stay up all night to yeah. make sure that people get done. Yeah. Guess what? That's how your life is on the truth. Every night should be like you got to turn in a paper the next day. That's how. That's how. Uh, that's the sense of urgency your mindset must be in. And guess what? We got we got a great example right here on earth. Look at the bishop. What day go by that you don't see something that he doing? If it ain't a radio show being released, or he traveling somewhere, uh, or, or, or a lesson or something. At one point, I remember I think five different YouTube channels from different states posted a video of him doing something. You know, it, it just we got the example set forth within the scriptures and in front of you. So make sure you're applying that in your life. All right. Last question. Mike forward to it. Yep. Mike forward to it. Just like Officer said, don't just be tired. Just stay up. Not doing nothing, playing the video game. That's not what I was talking about. I ain't resting, brother. Yeah. I ain't resting. I'm putting in work. I'm staying up with my eyes. Nah, that's not what it's talking about. This is what it's talking about right here. Micah chapter 4, verse 10. Micah chapter 4 and verse 10. Uh huh. Be in pain. Be in what? Be in pain. When you have to go to work 5, 6 o'clock in the morning off of five hours, four hours, three hours of sleep, it hurts, right? That's being in pain, really. Be in pain and labor to bring forth. And labor to bring forth. So yes, we all have jobs, carnal jobs, to support and put food on a table, but the job really begins when you get off. When you get off work, what work are you putting in for the most high, really? Be in pain and labor to bring forth. Uh -huh. Oh, daughter of Zion, like a woman in travail, for now shalt thou go forth out of the city, and thou shalt dwell in the field, and thou shalt go even to Babylon. There thou shalt be delivered. And it's up to us that when we're delivered, it's all on us. But for some reason, brothers, mainly, but I ain't gonna do it, sister. Brothers just act like this is uh, words on a page. They don't act like it's for real. They don't realize that if you put in work, we can get out of here faster. Brothers don't realize that. It's like, nah, I'm gonna just show up, man. Hey, hey, y'all doing good though. Please leave. You feel what I'm saying? Don't nobody want that type of stuff. Nobody needs cheerleaders. You better make your calling and your election sure. Don't don't worry about what the next man doing. We uh seek out your own salvation with fear and trembling. That's what the scripture says. Finish that. Uh there thou shalt be delivered. There the Lord shall redeem thee from the hand of thy enemy. Shalom, Israel. I'm Elton Nathaniel, Israel United in Christ. YouTube likes to shut our channels down, as some of you have noticed, <laughs> ever so often. Subscribing to join IUIC will assure you will always stay connected to our YouTube accounts. We want to do our best to make sure this truth gets up. Please click and join our subscriber YouTube channel called Join IUIC to stay linked to all of our videos. So again, please make sure you subscribe to this Join IUIC channel to get your latest updates on all our YouTube channels. Shalom.